Opening day is just one game on a 162-game schedule. But I'm going to tell you why it matters a lot to this Royals team. That's coming up next on Locked on Royals. You are Locked on Royals, your daily Kansas City Royals podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. You are tuned into another edition of Locked Royals on the Lockdown Podcast Network. As always, I'm your host, Jack Johnson, and you can follow me on Twitter or X at JohnnyJ underscore 15. That's at J-O-H-N-Y-J underscore 15. It's also very easy to find us on wherever you get your podcasts. That can be Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts. We're on Odyssey, and we're on YouTube. Just be sure to hit that follow button and subscribe. If you're a first-time listener, welcome in. We love new listeners here on the Lockdown Royals channel. And if you want to know a little bit more about me, I work here in Kansas City at Sports Radio 810 WHB. Got a show once a week over there. And I stay pretty busy in the producing world. And that basically means that my entire life revolves around sports. But with this podcast, when you click on it, whether it be through YouTube or be through one of those podcasting platforms, you know that you are getting 30 straight minutes of Royals baseball talk. Today's show is brought to you by Prize Picks, the perfect time to do so with March Madness beginning tonight. Well, at least the playing games in Dayton, Ohio, as well as the NIT. So get started with Prize Picks, get started with FanDuel. So many great things going on, and we're going to have plenty to go over throughout today's episode. But with it being Tuesday, it is now. We're now just nine days away. From opening between the Kansas City Royals and the Minnesota Twins, it'll be next Thursday. The weather app that I had this morning said it was going to be a high of 70 degrees, and that quickly changed. I went uh, and checked on the weather forecast. Looks like it's going to be in the mid-50s, so a little warmer than what it usually is on opening day. Seems like there's going to be sunshine, so that'll help a little bit. But if you haven't bought your tickets, go and uh, buy them now on game time and use our code of locked on if you haven't bought anything on game time before. But opening day is going to be a big deal. Opening day is going to be huge in Kansas City, especially with this offseason that the club has had. And at the end of the day, when this game concludes around 6 p.m., 6.30 next Thursday, it's going to be one game. Whether they win that baseball game or they lose that baseball game, It's just one. And I have seen really good Royals teams lose on opening day. And maybe I should hold that back on really good Royals teams. Because in my lifetime, there hasn't been many really good Royals teams. But I have seen some really bad ones go out there and win not only game one, but game two. And in the end, they were a 100-loss baseball team. So we all know that opening day is a big deal. But at the end of the day, it's one game. Like, you could lose opening day and win Saturday and Sunday and feel just fine about the start of the season. But I thought about this a little bit today, and I let it marinate in the back of my mind before I did a podcast episode tonight. And I've come to the conclusion that opening day is going to mean a lot more than just one game to this team, and I think to this city. Point being is that it's a different opening day compared to the last couple years. Last couple of years, I'm not sure you could have many fans showing up to the ballpark and saying, this team can go pretty far. This team can win 85 games. And it's still unlikely. And I would put it more on the likely side. It doesn't happen. But people can believe. You know, you've had national pundits. You've had MLB network people say this team can win a division. And so fans are going to hold on to that. And opening day is a big deal because the stadium's going to be full. It's a breath of fresh air. Everybody's 0-0. I mean, baseball starts at 5 a.m. in the morning here in less than 12 hours now. And I'm already setting my alarm, and I'm going to watch the Padres and the Dodgers. So I guess it's that breath of fresh air. So everybody will be 0-0 except for the Dodgers and the Padres. But with that breath, breath of fresh air comes expectation which comes optimism, which comes hope. And there's going to be a lot of people that take their families, take their loved ones, maybe go by themselves and spend money to come watch this team. 
and they're going to feel great about Cole Reagans out there on the mound. They're going to feel great that they are taking on the division rival, division champs in the Minnesota Twins. And though it's one game, it means a lot. It really does mean a lot, I think, for people buying it. And why I think it means so much is there's going to be a few people that go to Kauffman Stadium next Thursday and never venture out to the stadium again. Or they're going to base it on what happens. Okay, I'm just I'm just the messenger here. There's a chance. Not everybody goes to 20 games a year. Not everybody can afford that luxury. I'm not saying about the cheap tickets. I'm talking about you know, driving 30, 45 minutes an hour if you're far away, taking the entire family, maybe taking time off work. It's not easy for everybody. Not everybody lives close. Not everybody's willing to spend $30 for a ticket or $20 for a ticket and then concessions and parking. Not, not everybody's up for that. So the Royals are going to be on display, this new and improved team. And they're taking on the division rival. And everybody this entire offseason has been talking about hope, expectation, optimism. I know that I have. And though I can sit back after this result and say it's one game, win or lose, it's one game. Boy, playing well in front of a big crowd on opening day would do a lot for people. And I will say that even with a loss on Saturday and Sunday. Maybe I'm overstepping here. Maybe I'm just taking on too much with this expectation. But to me, there's something about performing when the lights are really bright. And opening day has pretty bright lights. Now, this is the kickoff of the Major League season. It's pretty big. Kauffman Stadium is not going to be sold out every single game. In fact, on Saturday, it'll be a much smaller crowd than there will be on opening day. It's important, I think, for this team to come out and play really well. And even if it's a loss, okay, so let me backtrack a little bit. I said it has to be a win. Let's say it's a loss. It has to be a competitive loss. And baseball's random. We all know that. You know, you could lose 10 to 1 on one night and win 10 to 1 the next. It's random. But to me, after what happened last year, they get shut out in back-to-back -back games. It sucked the life out of any sort of hope or optimism you had. They were out of it a week later. Done, cooked, fried. And this team, with its ace on the bump, with Bobby Wood Jr. playing in his first game after a massive new contract, boy, it would go a long way to play well in front of that many people. That's where I'm at right now. It means something. It means more than just one game. And like I said, I've seen bad Royals teams win on opening day and it not do much. I've seen good Royals teams lose on opening day, but it's different because the season they're coming off of, the stuff they did in the off season, the downtown ballpark talk, the new contract for Bobby Wood Jr., the Cy Young odds for Cole Reagans, you bring in Lugo, you bring in Walker, you bring in Smith, you bring in Stratton, you bring in Schreiber. You basically went by Royal standards all in to make this team better, or at least marginally all in. This opening day has something on the line. I'm not walking into the ballpark going, oh, it, baseball's back. It just feels good that it's back, and I don't really care what happens today because it's one game. Because I also will know in the back of my head, there's going to be people going in there saying, I spent a lot of money to be here. I don't want to see an egg be laid. I don't want to see a dud of a baseball team out there. You go out there and you lose four to three, or you win four to three, or you see some explosive plays, some great pitching, good fundamental play, a clean game. You know, where you walk away and you say, oh, a couple plays here and there, a couple of batters here and there, and it's different. I can live with it. And I think a lot of people could. And they could say, I can't wait for Saturday. You go out there and lose 6 0. Cole Reagans doesn't look good. Offense gets shut out by Pablo Lopez. A lot of people are going to go, see, this is the exact same team we're used to. I promise you, I have followed and covered this team for a long time. That's what a lot of people will do. That's what some fans will do. And if you win on Saturday and Sunday, again, it switches over and over again. But it's not opening day. That's going to be like 18,000 people, depending on weather. Opening day is going to get you over 30. And it's going to be packed. And it's going to be buzzing. Andy Reid's throwing out the first pitch. 
people are going to be feeling good. And if you play well and you give people a reason to come back out on Saturday and Sunday, it's going to go a long way. Now, because you win or lose on Thursday, next Thursday, that does not mean you're going to be good or bad long term. Again, you can still take that that approach of it's game one of 162. It's a marathon. I even said in yesterday's episode, you don't really know who you are until June 1st, or you can't really get a firm grasp unless you just bottom out or you're really good in the first two months of the season. You don't really know until June 1st. But for a lot of the average fans, the ones that you want to bring back in, the ones that were there for 14 and 15, opening day does hold merit. You play well, you take this offseason momentum, and you beat Minnesota or have a very competitive game, unlike last year, unlike some of those opening days in crappy weather in Kansas City, you play well, you'll have people buy in and go, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. I may come back out here for a game. That is what I think is on the line coming up next Thursday. Again, just nine days away before opening day for the Kansas City Royals. Royals and Twins, Reagans and Lopez, just nine days away. Okay, we're going to take our first break of the show. Coming up next, I made a case for Nick Prado as to why he should be the DH. Now I'm going to give the case for why Nelson Velasquez should still be the DH of the Kansas City Royals. That's next on Locked on Royals. You are tuned into Locked on Royals on the Locked on Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jack Johnson. Be sure to follow me on Twitter or X at JohnnyJ underscore 15. That's at J-O-H-N-Y-J underscore one five. Before we go any further, want to give a shout out to one of our sponsors today in prize picks. Football season may be over, but the action on the floor is heating up. Whether it's tournament season or the fight for playoff home court, there's no shortage of high six basketball moments this time of the year. Get in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, where you can turn your hoops knowledge into some serious cash. Right now, you can win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000 with NBA, NHL, and college basketball entries today on Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. So here's what you need to do. Go and download the app today and use code LOCKEDONMLB for a first deposit match of up to $100. Again, that is LOCKEDONMLB for that code for a deposit match of up to $100. Well, I understand that everyone is on this Nick Prado hype train. Nick Prado needs to be the guy you play him at first base, and we bump Vinny Pasquantino back to DH. I can see a world in which that happens. In fact, I said either on Sunday or it was yesterday, it's like 50-50 right now. They could go Prado. They could go Velasquez. And a lot has changed. I'm not going to be naive here. A lot has changed since I was down in surprise. When I was down in surprise, the Royals weren't playing games yet. So when I'm talking to Matt Quattrero, when we're speaking with coaches, we're speaking with players, the energy. The vibe was that Nelson Velasquez was going to be the guy. That Nelson Velasquez was going to rotate between DH and right field. He was going to get you know, some playing time, mixing and matching. In fact, I asked Matt Quattrero point blank, was Nelson Velasquez just the everyday DH or was he going to rotate? And he said, oh, we're not just going to pigeonhole him into one spot. We're going to move him around a little bit. So I left surprise thinking Nelson Velasquez was just fine, that his roster spot was okay. Then I had this change of heart. Because I failed to recognize that Nelson Velasquez is not a long-term MLB player. He doesn't really get that uh, fortunate gift a lot of veterans have of, I can go hit a buck 20 in spring and I still have a roster spot. He needed to play better than what he's giving you right now. That is the God's honest truth. He needs, I mean, there's still seven games left. They play tonight against the Giants. Seth Lugo is on the bump but I don't think Nelson Velasquez is in the lineup. I need need to go back and double check. But he needed to take this time in spring to show why he was a good pick. Now, spring training stats, as I've said for now, two, three, four weeks, maybe since the beginning. The umpteenth time, I should probably say. They don't matter. Okay, I really don't believe that the stats matter, but... Whereas Nelson Velasquez's stats aren't great, Prado's are, also some of the advanced numbers don't look that good on Velasquez. 
not hitting the ball incredibly hard. The power's not really there. And usually the power for power hitters is on display in that Arizona heat. But this is a segment about telling you why Nelson Velasquez should be that guy. Number one, if we are going off who's earned it, right? You go to opening day. The opening day starter for the Royals is Cole Reagans. He was not picked to be the opening day starter because of what he did in the spring. They picked him because of what he did in the final 12 starts that he had on the year. The only 12 starts he had for the Royals, I believe it was. Maybe it was nine. Nine to 12, I think we'll put it in that ballpark. So you reward him for what he did. They did not go into spring training saying, well, he's got to earn that spot out of spring. Because Cole Reagans has not been overly dominant in spring. He's been really good. A lot of the stuff I wanted to see, I have seen. And Lugo and Walker haven't been lights out either. But I think they went in the spring training going, he is going to be the guy because of what he did last year. And Velasquez, kind of the same thing here. Nelson Velasquez went on a power surge like we really hadn't seen before in a Royals uniform. Now, a lot of it was because there wasn't much of a book on Nelson Velasquez. Pitchers really didn't know how to throw to him. For Nick Prado, there's a little bit more of a book to him. But again, that's arguing the Prado point. I've already done that. I'm arguing Nelly Nukes's point here. I am trying to get him on the opening day roster. So if we are rewarding guys for what they did at the tail end of last year, well, Nelson Velasquez deserves a spot then. I think he's got more power than Nick Prado. I think he hits the ball harder than Nick Prado. When these two guys are going well, when they are hitting well, Velasquez gives you more thunder, more pop in the lineup. Now, Nick Prado may always be the higher OBP guy, but he's also a horrifically, horrifically bad strikeout hitter. I mean, 40% territory. You're above 30, and it's the, the alarm bells are going off in my head. And if you're not hitting 30 home runs, then you can't really strike out 30% of the time. So that's what goes against Prado. Velasquez is going to strike out. But if Velasquez strikes out over 30% of the time and hits a 25 home runs, I can live with it. I can live with some of that thunder in the lineup. Now, the Royals could be looking at it and saying, well, he's still young. We want to develop him more. If Velasquez was a, a two- or three-year guy in the bigs, had some seniority on Prado, maybe he just would have been that shoe-in guy. It doesn't matter if it's 120. He's been there, as I opened up this segment with. But I just don't know if I'm fully there with Prado, with the spring numbers, just those spring numbers alone. And there's a big, glaring memory I have about good spring training numbers. Chris Owings, who had one of the worst 10 years as a Royal, and he was here for like 40 games. Awful number. One of the, in fact, the worst hitter I've ever seen in the Royals uniform. I'll go as far to say that. Completely overmatched. I think he struck out 40% of the time. It was so undeniably awful. He hit like 460 in spring. And I thought, that's a good utility guy. Good utility bat. And it was completely fraudulent. So that's why I hesitate just a little bit when I see good numbers and especially numbers that are just kind of you know, dropping in singles here and there. Now, Prado's hit a couple of home runs. Prado's found the gaps a few times. He's had some two-strike hits. Those are good things for him. But I want to make sure more than anything it's real over Velasquez. If Velasquez gets the job and he doesn't do well and Prado's ready to go, then all right, I can make that switch. But I need to know Prado's for real. You know, I, I know I can say the same for Velasquez. I need to see if Velasquez is for real. But we have seen a really high for Nick Prado and a really low. And they've been similar in his first two years in the league. You know, starts off really well. Then when he gets figured out, when he goes in a slump, he really slumps. And for Velasquez... We haven't really seen that slump just yet. I'd like to test it out first. I'd like to see what a slump looks like for him. Because last year, in the minimal time he was there, he'd have a couple of 10, 15, 28 bat slumps, but he might have four hits and two or three of those are home runs. You're getting some value out of the slump. So that's my case for Velasquez. I'd like to see who he is first before I make that choice on product. There's some people that want Prado in there, and I don't blame you one bit. He's earned it out of spring. He's earned a, a chance to compete. He's earned a chance to put himself in the conversation, but 
I also want to see how true it is. I'd like to see in Triple Omaha if the strikeout numbers are really gone. If he can improve those power numbers a little bit. That's what I want to see, maybe more so out of Nelson Velasquez going down to Omaha and figuring it out. I'd rather be Prado than Velasquez down there in Omaha, but that's just my point here. Okay, before we move on to our final segment, I want to give you a reminder that tomorrow we are going to have our Locked On Sports preview, the divisional preview, where you can tune in to Locked On Sports today, our 24-7 streaming channel, and that'll be tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central Time. You can be the first to get that local insight from the local MLB experts, including myself, on the Locked On Podcast Network. Again, find that tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central Time on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. When we return, I know that he just got scratched from the lineup tonight with lower back tightness, but is Michael Massey a good gamble at second base? We'll talk about that next on Locked On Royals. You are tuned into to Locked On Royals on the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jack Johnson. Be sure to give me a follow on Twitter or X at JohnnyJ underscore 15. That's at J-O-H-N-Y-J underscore 15. Before we go any further, want to give a shout out to a couple of sponsors for today's show, starting with Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to, in, to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV also offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Also want to give a quick shout out to FanDuel as we are currently in the middle of the play-in games of March Madness. Tomorrow, actually be Thursday, excuse me, will be the real deal for March Madness. So go and get set up with FanDuel. And you can say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the NCAA tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's $200 to use on point spreads, money lines, and you can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. I tell you, this is one of my favorite times of the year. Opening day is just nine days away, but March Madness is going to get me there. Thursday, I'm going to be at work. But you know I am going to have some sort of pulse on those tournament games because I'm going to be locked in with FanDuel. I'm going to have some bets on the games, hopefully win some money. But if you haven't signed up yet, go and sign up so you can use our code of Locked On and win some big-time money with the NCAA tournament. Well, as I said before the break, Michael Massey got scratched from tonight's game against the Giants with some lower back tightness, a little bit precautionary right now so it's not alarming just yet it's not i'm not overly concerned with it you know i think the last person to have back tightness was jordan lyles and a couple days later he was fine but i do think with a pitcher it's more stress on the back uh if you do have that lower back tightness it can be more alarming than a position player there are negatives to both sides you know swinging a bat with a tight lower back doesn't sound too fun but the point of this is Michael Massey being the second baseman for the Royals. And fan graphs did a little bit of a preview as to what is, is valuable about each second baseman. Now, what looks good in each second baseman? With Massey, said that power number is pretty good there. The contact skills are pretty good. And there's value there to keep him there. And that, I think, was something I was believing in all offseason. That the power numbers were something you really couldn't ignore. As down of a year as he had, there still was noticeable power. Not immense power, where he's hitting 25, 30 home runs. But for a second baseman, you pop 15 home runs, people will take notice, especially for a guy the size of Michael Massey. He's not a very big player. And I think that shows the bat speed. I think that shows his ability to lift the ball. A couple of his home runs was just you know purely lifting the ball, getting it up there, hitting the ball hard and lifting it. And that is a good trait of his. Now, who knows what happens with this lower back tightness. They've got options to start there if this lingers. They will go to Adam Frazier, probably right after him. And if not Frazier, they'll probably turn to Nick Lofton and keep Garrett Hampson as that super utility guy. But 
I, I do think there needs to be a little bit more of a grace period for Massey. Some people that follow me, that comment on Massey, really don't want him there. They're ready to pivot and go on to Nick Lofton because Nick Lofton looked good in the minimal time that he was there. And at the end of the day, he's a first-round pick. People have been clamoring for him to, to come up to Kansas City ever since Massey was struggling back in April of last year. And that sticks with a lot of fans. MJ Melendez goes through the same thing. Kyle Isbell goes through the same thing. Somebody's going to go through it again for this Royals team in 2024. But I do believe there is something to watch there. There is some value there. He's not some throwaway second baseman that provides you nothing. Right, even Nicky Lopez, I thought had value as a player. Maybe not as a starter. You know, he might be a starter for the White Sox this year. So we know that Royals front office personnel is going to love to put Nicky Lopez on a roster and put him as a starter somewhere. But with Nicky Lopez, it was really just the defense. Now he did have a 300 season. I think his OBP was in the 360s as well. Like it was quite a major league season for Nicky Lopez in 2021. That kind of came out of nowhere. But where these two differ is that, you know, Massey may not be as good of a defender as Nicky Lopez. He is an above average defender, but I think the bat can give you a little bit more. He may not be that slap singles hitter, the guy that just puts the ball in play. I'd rather have a little bit more thunder in the bat. And if you give good defense and you pop 15 to 20 home runs and you got those good contact skills, you're not striking out too much. I think there's some traits you can like there. Now, who knows with this injury to the lower back, and I don't really want to call it an injury just yet. It's more of, a, you know, I just said precautionary. You know, you don't want to rush anybody in spring training. There's still seven games to go. Have him sit out tonight and see where you're at tomorrow. There are options behind him. But I would be pretty bummed out if we didn't get to see Michael Massey in a healthy, true, full form on opening day. Because I think he is a prime candidate to bounce back. I thought when he was going well last year, he was a valuable member of that lineup. And that is something I'm not just willing to throw away because last year he didn't hit that well. A lot of people did not hit that well. And that was frustrating for Kansas City. And I know that was frustrating for a guy like Michael Massey. Not in the lineup tonight, but hopefully it won't be too long for him to get back out there and get a couple more bats in before they get ready for the real deal next Thursday, opening day. Of course, just nine days away. Cole Reagans and Pablo Lopez, twins and Royals at Kauffman Stadium. If you haven't bought your tickets, go and buy them on game time today. Well, that's going to do it for another edition of Locked On Royals on the Locked On Podcast Network. I've been your host, Jack Johnson. Be sure to give me that follow on Twitter at JohnnyJ underscore 15. That's at J-O-H-N-Y-J underscore 15. We also... Want to make sure that you can go check us out on Locked On Sports today. It's here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now, available on the free Fire TV channels app. Tomorrow, we are going to talk about what Seth Lugo looked like and a couple of more headline and updating points for this Royals team as they inch closer and closer to opening day. We are almost just one week away from the start of the Major League Baseball season. Though actually, early this tomorrow morning, I should say, 5 a.m., you can check out the Dodgers and Padres in Korea. But until tomorrow's episode, you take it easy, Kansas City.